Hi, buddy. This is Mr. Folly, who had a request for my kid for the song, so I don't get it. But anyway, we are going to go over for podcast 11.2, solution formulas, molarity, percent by weight, mole fraction, remember that's chi, and molality, notice how that is italicized, not because they're loose. We're going to talk about colligative properties, boiling point elevation, freezing point depression, and osmotic pressure, and their calculations. And we're going to figure out how to get molar mass from boiling point elevation and freezing point depression. So that's not true. Colligative properties. Colligative properties is something where it doesn't matter the identity of the substance, just the number of particles. And the number of particles is I. So it doesn't matter whether you have Na positive or PB plus 4. You'd think that would make a difference, but it doesn't. It's just, oh, I have a particle? That counts the same. My only analogy for that is like voting. Okay? So if um, Nikki wins an election by having all of the dumb people vote for her, duh, 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 and she has, you know, a, you know, dumb people vote for Nikki. Smart people vote for Pierce because he spells his name the wrong way. So smart people vote for Pierce and dumb people vote for Nikki. It doesn't matter if you're smart or you're dumb. If there are 900 dumb people and only 100 smart people, Pierce, although the smart people voted for him, is a loser. And Nikki is a winner. Yay. Okay. I wish I had my now. Okay. So you figure these out by the number of particles that form. That has to be ionic particles or the ionic one. NaCl, um, so salt water, right? Salt water solution. And calcium chloride solution, this would have an I of 2, and a positive, Cl negative. This would have an I of 3, Ca plus 2, Cl minus, Cl minus, because I have two coins, the I would be different. Um, really, boiling point elevation and freezing point depression with a hint of osmotic pressure thrown in. That's all colligative properties are. Boiling point elevation, freezing point depression, and only a whisker of osmotic pressure. Okay? See your equation sheet, the stuff's in there to do that. And again, it's like voting. Boiling point elevation, this is your equation. Delta T, change in temperature, equals I times K times molality. Okay? Another way to rearrange that, which is breaking out the molality part, is delta T, delta T, sorry, equals I times K times mass over molar mass. It's the molar mass of the solids, kilograms of solvent. So again, I'm going to go over the, um, what these things are in a minute. K is the boiling constant. of solvent. We typically use water. Every once in a while there's an alcohol that they use. So that's it. And the mass is the mass of the solute. And everything else is labeled as molar mass. So, um, graphically. So if I have a regular freezing point, I have something go, and then this stabilizes. This is where the freezing occurs. So this is the temperature. So the temperature is dropping. And this is um, process of cooling. So this is as you cool it down, you know, or removing heat, I guess. I guess that's the better one is removing heat. So notice you're removing heat, but it doesn't get any colder, and that's because it's changing state. Now, this is a pure solvent. This is a solution, and it is very similar There's not a little hitch there, pardon me for that. Um, but notice this is lower, OK? So this is the normal freezing point, and the solution would be lower, OK? And this is removing heat. Now, why this happens is when things freeze, freezing equals making crystals, basically. Basically, that's not exactly what it is, making crystals. Solid gets in the way. So if it gets, if solid gets in the way, a more extreme temperature is required. More extreme temperature is needed. And that's it. Freezing point depression. Freezing point depression. That was freezing point depression. So I just do boiling point elevation and get it wrong. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, freezing point depression. So if delta equals I times K times molality, notice that's the same thing, by the way. K for boiling does not equal K for freezing. Or delta equals I times K times no. Okay? Now, 
let me do the same thing for. Um, I did boiling first, didn't I? Let me do that same graph for boiling. Um, oops, I probably go the other way because you warm stuff up and you know, pardon me. So if I'm going to warm this up. It's a liquid. Mm -hmm. Ooh, and I can make it a, a difference. So it's tip ten. So what happens is we start at the same thing here. Boiling point elevation, so it actually goes up higher. Okay. So that would be the same thing. The red equals solution. And the black, I hope that's black, equals pure solvent. Okay, so boiling point goes up and the freezing point goes down. So why does the boiling point go up? I told you why the freezing point went down the last one. Why does the boiling point go up? Boiling point goes up because solute is very attractive. So it takes more energy to leave the condensed liquid state. Notice I drew these graphs. It's not because I want you to have better understanding. It's because AP uses those graphs. I do want you to have better understanding, but that's it. I don't get it. I is the Van Hoff factor again. It tells the amount of dissociation. I think of it like ions. It's not really ions, but because it's a little I, it's usually ions. Non-electrolytes have an I of 1. Non-electrolytes are pretty much any organic thing. So you need to be able to pick out those things to go through it. If you don't know what it is, meaning where the ions are, if you don't know what the ions are, then I is generally 1. So question 3, this is on your AP questions you have in your packet. More mass than unknown solid, which is non-volatile, non-electrolyte. What does that mean? I equals 1. It's to be determined by, or determined, by the freezing point depression method. The pure solvent used in the experiment freezes at 10, so pure solvent freezes at 10, and has a known molal freezing point depression constant, Kf. So we know it, they just don't tell us what it is. Some of the following materials are also available. Test tube, stop watch, thermometer, ice, stove, graph paper, hot water, damp, like that. So you can heat up or cool it down, and we're doing this by the freezing point depression, so we're probably not going to use that. Okay. Find the molar mass of a, oh, that was the start of the question. So let me get the rest of that question, because you have it. It is question three on your AP thing. So it's in here. Will you hear me flipping through yours? Oh, you're getting yours too. You're going to need that information. Um, part A says using two graphs. What are, what are the graphs going to look like? So here's 10, and we just kind of did this. So we're going to freeze it. This is going to be pure, and you'd have to label it. Um, it cools from 20 to 0, so this would be 20, and this would be 0. Um, that's pure, not poor. And then solution, it's going to be, this is my 20, this is my 10, which is where it froze before, and this is my 0. And you draw that, and you have to label the axes, so this is temperature, this is time of cooling, and those axes are the same. Um, B, information is best when we determine the molar mass of the unknown solid. One, describe the measurements that must be made. So the measurements that must be made, again, mom equations, LT equals I times K times mass over molar mass kilograms of solvent. So the measurements that must be made are not delta T. They are freezing point. They are of both freezing point of the pure one, freezing point of the solution. Um, the other measurements would be mass of solutes. Hey, that's a measurement directly. Mass of kilogram solvent, that's a measurement directly. This one's going to be calculated. This one flipped up. This one is one by the non volatile one. So the things that I kind of boxed in there are my measurements. Um, part two, so the setup for the calculation that must be performed to determine the molar mass, the unknown. This is almost it. Except for delta T needs to be T sub F, or yeah, T sub F minus T sub I, which would be uh, T right there. And then the rest goes right there. Um, explain how the difference between the two graphs in part A can be used to obtain information needed to calculate the molar mass unknown. How can it be used? This is how you calculate delta T. Delta T is determined by the change in those. Uh, part three, explain the diff. Oh, let's see that one. C, suppose that during the experiment, a significant but unknown amount of solvent evaporates in the rest of the tube. 
what effect does this have on the calculated value of the molar mass? So what happens here, again, I write my equation in both T equals I times K times mass over molar mass kilogram solvent. So what they're telling me is my kilograms of solvent is too small. So if this number is too small, really what I'm solving for is molar mass. So molar mass equals I times K times mass over delta T kilograms. So if this number is too small, solvent. So if kilograms of solvent are too small, that means if I get smaller and smaller and smaller, my molar mass will be too large. Algebraically. And then the earlier Find the molar mass for non-volatile, non-electrolyte, who, when 2.15 grams are dissolved from, uh, in 500 milliliters of water, has a freezing point of minus 4.5. Find the molar mass, um, by the way, milliliters of water. Water's molar freezing point is negative, ooh, mm, I don't know. We'll say K is 0.86 for that. So, delta T equals I times K times mass over molar mass kilograms solvent. Now, my delta T, water has a freezing point of zero, so delta T is 4.45. It's an absolute value thing, or final line initial. I, non-volatile, non-electrolyte, I is 1. K, we're going to call it 0.86 this time. I think that's right, but I can't remember. Mass of solute, 21.5. This is in milliliters, but remember, one gram of water equals one milliliter of water. So that means I have 500 grams, which is 0.5 kilograms. Kilograms, so 500 grams equals 0.5 kilograms. I'm not saying you can't do that math. I'm saying you might have forgotten to do that. And then we solve for molar mass. So 0.86 times 21.5 divided by 0.5 divided by 4.45. And my molar mass is really my right. molar mass equals 8.5. Grams per mole. That doesn't seem right to my guessing, but you guys can check that. Osmotic pressure is delta or pi. That's the osmotic pressure. It's on your equation sheet, by the way. I is the Van Hoff factor. This is molarity. R is um, 8.314, and temperature has to be in kelvins. Okay. So pi is osmotic pressure. I is Van Hoff with the ions, right? Molarity is molarity of particles when you use I. So that means this right here means that it makes a difference there. So two molar means your I M thing would be four. Two molar MgCl2. See how this has magnesium and two of these. So that would be the I would be three times two. The I M factor. Which I have to the jasmine pressure of a solution of 1.455 grams of blah, 500 milliliters aqueous solution of this. So pi equals I, what was it again? Hmm. Times M times RT times M times RT. Osmotic pressure, so I, B, E, S, O, 4 would be two particles, right? One B, E, one S, O, 4. This is the osmotic pressure. Now molarity, remember, equals moles over liters which equals mass over molar mass in liters of stone bond. So my mass is 1.455, and R, 8.314. 21 is a dirty word here, 21 plus 273. Shame on me for calculator, and I did 294. All over the molar mass. Oh, my goodness, I don't have a calculator for that. I don't know what boiling is. Um, and then liters. So this is 500 milliliters, so that's going to be 0.5. Um, I think beryllium is like 9. So if BE equals 9, we'll go to that. 9 plus 32.06 plus 64, which is all his actions, is 105.06. So again, I don't have a period table in front of me. Shame on me, but that's what I do. Do that math, and there's an osmotic pressure. Oh, I should probably show you what osmotic pressure is. It's based on a YouTube. Normally, you would expect, and there's a little semi-permeable membrane here. You've got a solution that is pure, and you have a solution that is, a, I guess, a pure is not a pure one. So if I have solute in here, the solute is more attractive. So if it's more attractive, what happens is this stuff goes through here. And you end up with 
I should change my color to make, you can see this is the after one. Hopefully this is a different color. Oh, even if I thought I could tell this is a different color. It's not so much time in my brain. Add up with this. This one's over here, still pure. Notice this is a little less dilute. Same number of particles, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. But because in the bigger thing, it's more dilute. So this is the osmotic pressure. See the pressure from that. And now we are back to the review part, finding molar mass of AP chemistry's favorite. So you can truly expect that. Freezing and boiling occur at a constant temperature. Remember those graphs. And colligative cares about particles, not identity. So algebra is the AP chem student's best friend, unless it is a world of warfare. So, toodles.